Estoy en una ciudad del sur de Israel, en una pequeña localidad del sur de Israel, mejor dicho, que se llama Kuma. Aquí se ha traído todos los coches que fueron tiroteados o quemados el 7 de octubre en el ataque terrorista de Hamas. Detrás de mí podéis ver muchos de ellos y realmente os digo que la escena es bastante impresionante. Hay decenas, cientos de coches que, han quedado, que se han quedado aquí completamente destrozados, completamente quemados. Algunos simplemente tiroteados, pero también destrozados, otros con el impacto de una de munición antitranque y lo terrible de todo esto no es por supuesto la destrucción que es bastante terrible ya de por sí sino saber que en muchos de estos coches había gente dentro que murió en ese terrible ataque terrorista. Siguiendo la tristemente famosa carretera 232, donde los terroristas asesinaron a decenas de personas, vamos casi hasta la misma frontera. Estamos ahora en el kibbutz Kisufim. Es uno de los que más cerca está de la franja de Gaza, a poco más de kilómetro y medio, y es uno, por supuesto, de los que más sufrió el 7 de octubre. Detrás vemos un ejemplo de lo que pasó, de cómo quedaron algunas de las casas. Aquí vivían unas 250 personas y 15 de ellas fueron asesinadas ese mismo día. Aparte de eso, también se secuestró alguna y nos lo está enseñando una mujer cuyo marido murió defendiendo este kibbutz ese día 7 de octubre. I lived here for the last 17 years. Um, I think uh, the welcome party that the uh, Hamas threw me when I just moved here was also a, a red color. Okay. Back then we didn't have a shelter, so we needed to run to a, a community shelter. Uh, and we have only five uh, seconds to go there, so it was very uh, scary for me back at the time. Eh, Yasmin nos contó cómo fue salvada tras muchas horas de permanecer escondida en casa con sus hijas. So we didn't know what the time, what happened outside, and the next time that someone uh, trying to open our house, of course, I still didn't want to open, uh, but he broke the window of the kitchen and it was the current uh, uh, out of the security. It was Sunday at 9 a.m. and uh, he told me, pack, uh, pack your thing, we must go. Uh, and I opened the door and I saw a lot of uh, soldiers. It's a lot that uh, I can't even tell you how much. A lot of soldiers and uh, I realized it's not normal. And But my feeling was that if uh, wanted the current uh, is here so of course saw outside fighting um, because in my head one was dead um, so we went outside me and the girls with our pajamas and just a suitcase that we stuff underwear and something to wear we didn't know of course we didn't know that we're gonna leave the house so I don't know when we go coming back but um, When we went to the bus, it's about 115 meters from the from the door. Um, it was during fighting. Still, uh, the army was fighting the terrorists. So all around us is uh, a lot of dead bodies. I don't know if it's soldiers or terrorists. Uh, but for the kids, it was something um, like adventure. Ah, I saw dead bodies. So now I, I, I think that the day scared from every noise and um, the impact of these things just starting to arise. 
Yasmin nos llevó por todo el kibutz, mostrando la destrucción provocada el 7 de octubre. Nuestro siguiente destino fue el lugar en el que el 7 de octubre se estaba celebrando el Festival Nova. 364 personas fueron asesinadas allí, la mayoría chicas y chicos muy jóvenes, que son recordados con un homenaje improvisado pero sobrecogedor. Allí conocimos a un portavoz de Zaka, la ONG judía que se dedica a recuperar los restos de víctimas de atentados, accidentes o desastres naturales. Even the most seasoned veteran uh, uh, volunteers of ours we have, which we have over 3,000 in the country, was not prepared for what we saw. I describe it as walking into a horror movie. The first time we drove down here, um, I was driving on the main road here, and there were cars on both sides of the road. Some of them burnt to the ground, some of them riddled with bullets. Uh, bodies literally strewn on the road itself. We had to drive around the bodies on the road in order to get into the kibbutzim. That whatever you would see in any Holocaust museum anywhere in the world is precisely what we saw here, um, with no exaggeration. Uh, these hands held Uh, burnt babies that were burnt alive. These hands held decapitated soldiers' heads. I mean, we're talking about the most gruesome things you can imagine. And in my case, you know, a lot of people that were working during those uh, those months, those weeks after the, the war, um, the bodies came in in body bags and they were identified by a police sticker that had an identity number written on it. And many of the people working there chose to Uh, relate to the victims that they were dealing with just by that number for two reasons. First of all, they wanted to distance themselves from what they were doing. And number two, they were afraid that perhaps they would know the name of someone that they're one of the victims and they wouldn't be able to continue their work. I personally had the exact opposite experience. I come from a family of Holocaust survivors. So when I think about Jews being massacred and being referred to as numbers, I think back at the Holocaust. And for me, it was very important to know the name of every single victim that I was dealing with. Por último, Wander habló también de la evidencia de abusos sexuales. Any Zaka member that was working here um, knew right away that there was sexual abuse. También nos contó su historia de Lai, un joven que estaba en el Festival Nova y logró sobrevivir. Um, after like 30 minutes in that field, we heard footsteps. The floor was made out of dry leaves, so we could hear everything. Um, we heard steps coming towards us and we heard Arabic. Uh, we saw three terrorists with the green headband and rifles walking towards us. They didn't see us at the beginning. But then one of my friends just stood up because he was scared. He stood up and started running for his life. Uh, then everybody had to just go out from their cover and run for their life. Uh, that moment we split up. I stick with one of my friends and the three soldiers. We decided to stay in the field. We ran for like 50 meters and, and then just lay down on the floor uh, under different trees. And we waited for the terrorists to, to chase us and to do like hide and seek with them, like if they see us again, to run to another trees. Uh, but they didn't find us at the beginning. Uh, we heard the gunshots from the last spot we were hiding, so we thought they shot our, they shot our friend. Um, but then we had a couple of minutes of silence, 
and I keep saying to the soldiers, please call your commander, call the SQ, why no one is coming, uh, you, you're serving in a special unit, uh, you have the, the phone numbers, just call them. And he's telling me that the commander uh, keep telling him that they have battles on the way, they're confronting terrorists on the way, and they already have losses, um, and they can't, they, there's a big chaos going on, they can't come to us, they cannot <laughs> rescue us. Um, after like three hours, his commander uh, texted him that rescue is on the way, um, and we heard a heavy vehicle coming towards us, and when it was like 50 meters from us, we heard a huge explosion, and there was a battle starting to go on uh, really close to us. We could tell the difference between the AK-47 bullets and the uh, M4A1 bullets because we were all uh, in a combat unit in the army. Um, and after like five minutes of battle, all we heard was uh, uh, AK-47 bullets and there are the uh, terrorists speaking and screaming in Arabic and we heard the vehicle going away. Um, so we thought it's our end. At some point, we the only thing we thought is like uh, we 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 thought we we're gonna die, and we just thought, we just we're thinking we're thinking like uh, please be quick, please uh, don't like, don't don't kidnap us. Um, that's what we had in, in our mind. But after like six or seven hours, my friend got message on WhatsApp. From, a, from an helicopter pilot of the police. Uh, he asked for our location. We sent him our location uh, and he came above us. He couldn't, he couldn't see us because we were under the trees. And he texted us that there are terrorists in the field, but he cannot see any movement. So if we can, we need to go out from our cover and just wave to him so he could send forces. Uh, my friend was about to, to, to go out, uh, but I held him and I told him not to do so because I heard the, the terrorist speaking a few meters from us. And after like 30 minutes of the helicopter just flying above us, uh, he texted us that, that he's Robert? out of fuel. And after a total of nine hours, uh, six or seven police officers uh, came to us, came to our spot, uh, because they got uh, one of the soldiers' location. And uh, we went we walked to the highway, to 232 Road. Uh, we entered the, the car and the police officer uh, telling us, he's saying to us, don't look away from the window. Uh, we had to look away because all we saw last hours was uh, avocado trees. Um, so we entered the, the, the car, we started driving and we went past all the bomb shelters on the way and we saw all the cars uh, on the side of the road, with the bodies inside them, uh, some bodies on the ground with camping stuff on the ground because what they did is ju they just murdered them in their car, threw the bodies outside, threw the camping stuff outside and stole the car and kept murdering people on the way. Um, the bomb shelters was full of bodies, uh, outside and inside and everywhere in the cars. Uh, we also saw bodies of terrorists and and uh, medic. So. Uh, bodies of medic and ambulance uh, crew uh, and they took us to outside Berry and outside Berry there was an ambulance that uh, took us to the uh, center of Israel we were literally zigzagging between the bodies until the rot uh, and they got home by 8 p.m. Uh, the friends that we A pesar de lo que tuvo que vivir y sufrir, Elay fue muy afortunado. Él puede contarlo, no como las decenas de secuestrados en el propio festival o los 364 chicos y chicas que fueron asesinados allí, en una masacre de la que, solo seis meses después, muchos se han olvidado ya. <risa> 